Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here, SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologist JoeChaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com. And we're going to look at the tropics today because there's a few things going on that we want to point out. And we're also going to look at the weather models because they are pretty interesting. First off, this is tropical, was tropical storm Fiona, now back to a depression, which is actually flaring up some thunderstorms uh, near and east of the center this afternoon. So we'll s really trying to just kind of hang on. The more interesting development to, to me is the uh, upper air disturbance uh, I'm sorry, the tropical wave that is moving westward across the Atlantic and has uh, shown some signs of organization today. We're seeing an increase in the amount of thunderstorm activity for the first time in days. This is a very large system, and because there's so, been so much dry air at the mid-levels of the tropics, uh, the uh, system has, has just really have not, has not been able to get going. But as it's, it's inching its way further westward, it is starting to pick up some convection. So uh, this leads me to think that this stands a fair chance of developing into a tropical depression or even a tropical storm as it continues its track toward the west-northwest. Uh, most of the models want to take this into the Bahamas by the first part of the weekend. Now, you're not going to see it uh, in, in its full view, but if you take a look down here in the corner, just emerging onto this picture view is the disturbance that is southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. It is very large and very well organized. It's clear that there is an upper level and mid-level circulation here, and there's probably a developing low-level circulation as well. The Hurricane Center this afternoon assessed that the, center, the uh, circulation at the surface was probably not uh, strong enough to classify it as a depression. But I think it's well on its way, and it will become a depression or a tropical storm probably in the next day or two. Now, with regards to where this is all going, you know, looking at, I wanted to wait for all the afternoon weather models to come in. And we'll look at first at the, I'm going to look at the Canadian first, because the Canadian is the one that makes the least sense to me. And even though it's a little, makes, uh, it's a little better than what it had the last couple of days, it's still uh, it makes the least sense to me. Here is uh, the the middle wave. This is Fiona. This is the system I just pointed out to you uh, near the Cape Verde Islands. Now, what the Canadian does is that it actually holds on to Fiona. Here's the uh, other one as it approaches the Bahamas. Fiona kind of starts to re-strengthen a bit southeast of North Carolina. This thing has a problem in that it, it, it has its circulation is very close to what's left of Fiona. Uh, now you've got the approaching system from the Cape Verde Islands. So you've got three systems here uh, that are being indicated. I think this is the least likely scenario, to be honest. And especially as we go through time, because you've got these three systems so close together, they just interact with each other in a rather ridiculous way. So we've got a hurricane here, a strong tropical storm here, uh, and then the third system, this is the what was originally Fiona. Again, I think this is the least likely of outcomes. Now, we'll go to the GFS, and what the GFS does is a little different as well because it loses Fiona, and it actually, you can kind of see what was left of the tropical wave that's approaching the leewards, but it really doesn't do much with that at all. It just kind of leaves it there. You have a maybe a weak depression that forms uh, in the Bahamas. And the main system from the Cape Verde Islands recurves uh, out to sea along about 60, and it never really gets that other system going. Um, so we'll now jump to the European. And I think the European probably has the view that makes the most sense to me, uh, whether it becomes the reality or not remains to be seen. But Fiona on this one is here and the European loses that. Uh, now we have the system that's approaching the leewards now and the one southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. So we're into Wednesday. Uh, there's weak low pressure here. Uh, there is the new tropical storm uh, or almost hurricane here by the time we get to Saturday. But now something starts to develop in the Bahamas from that tropical wave. Uh, it becomes a tropical storm in and of itself and heads up into the northeastern Gulf of Mexico and intensifies into a pretty strong hurricane there, while the other one becomes a major hurricane and recurves out to sea. So uh, 
to me, I mean, looking at the three solutions, the Canadian being the most ridiculous and the GFS in the realm of possibility and the European probably makes the most sense given what's going on now. Uh, looking at that, that second wave that's in the middle, uh, this one here, uh, being that it is picking up convection, if it continues that trend, it would seem to me that that one's just not going to disappear off the face of the earth. Now, I want to look at, I want to just show you the upper air, because this is what's going on in the Atlantic. And I'll backtrack it just a little bit. You've got this east-west ridge, so everything wants to move from east to west underneath it. But what happens is over time is that ridge begins to weaken. We have a, a, a series of shortwave troughs that move through the northern jet and essentially split the ridge. And you've got this weakness here that opens up. So that would suggest that that tropical system near the Cape Verde Islands finds this opening here and moves northward and then northeastward. The other system that winds up in the Bahamas is trapped underneath this big upper high that develops in the east. And all the models have that in some, in some form or another. And then as that high weakens, uh, a tropical system that develops in the, into the Gulf of Mexico winds up moving northeastward and then northward. You have a pretty active northern stream here that goes uh, across the Dakotas through the Great Lakes and off the east coast and a lot of troughing into the central Atlantic. So this is the Europeans' view. This, uh, this probably, as I said, makes the most sense. Now, is this the one that's going to wind up playing to reality or not? That I can't tell you. I think there's just too many variables, too many um, tropical systems running around, and each is going to have some kind of longer-term impact on the overall pattern. We're just going to have to wait to see how this all plays out. So that pretty much sums it up uh, for today as far as the, uh, the upper air is concerned. I have a separate post that, that goes into specifics with all of this and also looks at some of the tropical weather models. And you can find that on meteorologistjoechoppy.com. And don't forget SNS Storm Chases for all your storm chasing needs. And uh, you can go to uh, weatherlongisland.com or meteorologistjoechoppy.com for all your local weather.